And again, a, a big mistake a lot of people would make here is a lot of people would have started with this flowchart, especially because they talked about the x-ray. But the x-ray here was just a parenthesis. We want the electron to have this same wavelength. So, we have, so we're focusing on the electron. But if we were focusing on an x-ray or other types of electromagnetic radiation, then this would be the relationship between wavelength and energy. So there's two different flowcharts here for the two different types of particles. Okay, so this is another important flowchart to maybe uh, recopy and make sure you have a clean copy of this in your notes. You get to bring a cheat sheet to the test? Yeah. All right, well, this might be, these might be good things to have on your cheat sheet. Okay. Uh, so what was it that gave us trouble here? Oh, so one thing that gave us trouble is you saw correctly that the question was asking us for this, the potential difference. Uh, but then uh, our first instinct, your first instinct was just to say, well, gee, what's delta U? But that would have been too easy. That would have been just one step. So instead, yeah. you have to ask, um, what, what information did they give us that matches anything in this flowchart? And as it turned out, they kind of gave us the hardest possible problem. They made us start all the way back here. OK. Okay, um, so as usual, we have to set this up a little bit. So um, th there's two big themes to this whole chapter. Um, one theme is wave-particle duality. And wave-particle duality is that um, even things that we think of as waves actually have particle characteristics. And even things that we think of as particles actually have wave characteristics. And we can see that here with this flowchart. Um, even, so something with mass, you normally think of as a particle, but it turns out that that actually also has uh, a wavelength. And we might usually think of light as um, a wave, but we can see that actually is also can be thought of as particles and photons. That's one of our lessons here. Uh, the other theme besides wave-particle duality is quantization. Quantization. So what does quanti or quantization versus continuousness? So what's the difference between when things are quantized and when they're continuous? Something continuous can take on any value in a continuum, but something quantized can only take on discrete values. Uh, so to give an example, let's say we talk about, say, um, uh, let's see, uh, how many children a family has. And let's ask, what are the possible numbers of children that a family can have? What's the smallest possible number of children that you can have? One. I would say maybe zero. Oh, yeah. At least I'm in that category. I don't know about you, but so far <laughs> I'm still in the zero category. Okay. So uh, then you can have one. Then what's the next number? Two. Three. And then three. But could you have anything in between here? Could you have 1.5 or 2.5? Well, not unless you're making kind of a joke. No, you can't. You can only have, so um, So would we say that children are quantized or continuous? Quantized. Yeah, children are quantized. They don't realize it, but they're quantized. Mm -hmm. Is that the right word, quantized? I think so. OK, now how about, let's think about um, how much time uh, I'm going to spend sleeping this evening. How much time I'm going to spend uh, sleeping? Well, um, is that quantized or continuous? Continuous. That's continuous because I don't know if it, uh, it could be anywhere between zero hours and I don't know twelve hours. That's as much time as there is in the night if I'm really sleepy. But it could be anywhere on the number line in between these, right? So I, I could sleep for one point five six seven eight nine eight six hours, right? I can uh, split this up into as fine as I want, basically. So time, it seems is basically continuous. You basically think of time as being continuous. Okay, uh, and the big theme of this chapter is that a lot of things that seem continuous are really quantized. A lot of things that seem continuous are really quantized. Uh, and one good example of that is energy. In many situations, energy is quantized. That means the energy can only take on certain values. 
Uh, so let's see how that applies to a hydrogen atom here. So we know that in the hydrogen atom there's electrons circling around the nucleus. So here's the nucleus. And let's say here's an electron that's circling around the nucleus. So um, you might think of this as almost like a little solar system where the nucleus is the sun and the electron is a planet that's circling around the nucleus. All right, and how much energy this, uh, how much energy is this electron going to have? Well, that kind of depends on how far away it is and how quickly it's orbiting, right? So um, um, in the old version, the kind of the natural view is it seems like this energy should be continuous because it seems like the electron should be able to be any distance it wants from the nucleus and go any speed it wants. It seems like the electron should be able to go any speed and be any distance. So it seems, uh, based on common sense, that the energy should be continuous. However, surprise, the big lesson of this chapter is that things that seem continuous are oftentimes quantized. What that tells us is actually only certain orbits are allowed. Actually only certain energies are allowed. Some energies are allowed and some energies are not allowed. So the allowed energies for this electron are quantized. Uh, it would seem like it could be any distance and any energy from the nucleus, but actually it's going to be quantized. And then the basic formula for that is the allowable energies. This is the basic formula that tells us the allowable energies. Uh, now this is only for an atom with a single electron. This formula works for an atom with a single electron. And n here is an index. n is the index that tells us the allowable energies. n could be 1, two, three, four, any positive integer. But n can only be positive integers. And that tells us that the energy is quantized. Because n couldn't be 1.5 or 1.6. So only certain energies are allowed here. Only certain orbits are allowed. Mm. But, uh, thinking about, so I'll you think of this, uh, I should say this is really potential energy. Think of this as the potential energy of the electron. So only certain potential energies here are allowed. Um, now, do uh, what do things want? Do things want high potential energies or low potential energies? Um, low. Yeah. After all, again, if I drop the chalk holder, it would lower its potential energy by going to the ground. Things want low potential energies. So do things prefer to have positive potential energies or negative potential energies? Um. Yeah, because negative is lower than positive. Yeah. Negative is lower than positive. So it shouldn't be too amazing to us to see a negative sign here. Um, negative is lower than positive. Uh, now, where does the electron want to be? Close to the nucleus or far from the nucleus? Far. Now, the electron is negative, and the nucleus is positive. Uh, close. So it wants to be close. So if we make our chart here. The happiest the electron can be is when it's uh, as close as possible to the nucleus. What would be the energy when n equals 1? Negative 13. What does EV stand for? Oh, yeah. So I should say, what does EV stand for? Uh, this is a unit. This is electron volts. Uh, I should have explained. This is negative 13.6 electron volts. Uh, negative 13.6 electron volts. And Z is um, the, remember that Z is the atomic number. Oh, okay. Z is the atomic number, which remember means that's the number of protons in the nucleus. Uh -huh. So let's, uh, let's make this simple and think about a case where Z is one. So we're thinking about hydrogen. So it'll just be negative 13.6? Electron volts. So this would be the slowest energy that you could have when you're closest uh, to the nucleus. And then what about, say, when N is equal to two? Well, we could plug in the number 2 here and see what we would get. Uh, I guess we would get uh, Now remember that, oh. Yeah, let's actually calculate the energy we would get here. That's a good exercise. Electron volts. All right, 
And again, we're thinking about a hydrogen atom with z equal 1 over here. So you can't forget to square the number 2 over here. So this would be an electron that's further from the nucleus. So it's not as happy. Uh, you can see it's not as happy because its uh, energy is higher. A smaller negative number means a higher number over here. Uh, let's do one more. Let's do n equals 3. 